Hey, how exciting was the eclipse today? April 8th, 2024. Well, I got to see a partial lunar eclipse and it was kind of a crazy morning because I did not have a pair of the solar glasses to look through. So I was driving all over the place trying to find a pair and could not find any anywhere. It was crazy. I went to every single place I could think of and there was not one pair of glasses. And so I said to the Lord, Lord, I cannot believe that there would not be one pair of glasses that I could look through to see this once in a lifetime event. And I missed the last one, so I'm kind of upset about missing this one. Well, just about that time, uh, you know, it started uh, changing. The sky started getting darker and darker. And it didn't get too dark here in Colorado, but you could definitely tell a difference. And so I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm just going to go out to my little town momentarily. And uh, I thought I would stop by and get some food real quick at this one little house. And so I went to do that and I thought maybe they were about ready to close. Well, right when it hit totality, okay, and we didn't have the full thing, so it wasn't really totality. It was just the peak of the partial solar eclipse. So I go up to the house and, uh, you know, go right through the door, and I said, are you still open? And all of a sudden, they just said to me, do you want a pair of glasses to look at the eclipse right now? And I'm like, yes! I was so excited. It was like the last moment to look at it before, you know, it went from the totality to, you know, fading out and going back to normal. So they let me use a pair of the solar eclipse glasses, and I actually tried to take a couple of photos through the lens with my uh, phone and I got a couple of shots that worked. The rest of them, you couldn't make out anything. And so I was very fortunate that I got a couple of shots of it. But when I looked through the glasses, it was so cool, you guys. And I could see definitely the moon over the sun and, you know, you could still see part of the sun and it was just really neat. So I felt very excited about that. And then I knew that the one going over Dallas Fort Worth would be over where my mom and my grandparents and my dad and my uncle and everybody's buried and the place where my mom grew up and where I was born. So I decided to come back here and I had seen in the morning that they were going to air that part of that on the weather channel so they showed the exact airport that i had flown into before when my grandmother passed away and they were going to be filming it from that area so i came back and just as i got the tv on they showed the dallas fort worth eclipse and i was so thrilled you guys it was so exciting because I was kind of depressed with myself that I didn't make it to Texas for the eclipse because I want to go back and visit and haven't been able to for the last two years. So I was really excited to see it. I didn't miss it. And so some of the, the Weather Channel had different eclipses, you know, as it was going up the through Texas and then up to the eastern seaboard and so they showed different ones along the way so um, I have a little screenshots of what they showed but you know what's really interesting is that I noticed that there really were two diamond rings and possibly even a third one because people saw the one where the outer ring suddenly makes a diamond but there was also a um, diamond that had a gold band around it that went on to the part of the moon that you could see. So it was, it really looked like a ring, a band with a um, diamond. And some people saw it underneath at the bottom 
and making the ring around with the diamond at the bottom. Some saw it up at the left. So it was really spectacular, and I was totally thrilled to see all of these different things. So I wanted to share a couple of those views of the eclipse that people got in that area where I would have been had I gone there. Uh, they were worried about the clouds, but the clouds did part, and I got a very clear view. And then later on, they got some big hail out there in Gale, Texas. It was very large. Um, I would say probably at least two and a half inches in diameter. But let me just share this one scripture with you because I had a couple of things to say about it. And I'm hoping I'm not going to mess myself up doing this here. Um, when it's talking about the coming of the Son of Man in Luke... And this is Luke 21, starting in verse 25. And it says, of course, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear with the, except, uh, the expectations of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now listen to this verse. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. So let me tell you about this because I think this is really fascinating that it's telling you to look up because that's what everybody did during the eclipse was look up to the sky and they were lifting up their heads looking up, okay? And right before this, you know, this is what happened today. People were lifting up their heads and looking up. And then when it says, because your redemption draws nigh, do you realize that this is linked to Passover in this particular scripture because your redemption draws near. You guys, do you remember that I told you that I had that revelation about um, Passover night being the night of watching? It's known by the Jews as the night of watching for the redemption, for their redemption. And they're supposed to be watching on that night, which is exactly what the Messiah, Jesus, told his disciples. Couldn't you just watch one hour? Well, that was the night of watching for the redemption. And then he told them to sleep on because he knew that he was going to have to die and come back 2,000 years later. So this is basically telling you when these things begin to happen with the, you know, the signs in the sun, moon, and the stars to look up and lift up your heads, which is what we did today, and Passover coming up April 22nd in the evening is the night of watching for the redemption. So right there we have an eclipse and a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse, and because your redemption draws near, and that redemption will be on Passover night the time of watching for the redemption, for the Lord to appear suddenly and rescue us. And that is the truth. So that is really an incredible connection there to that scripture. Because it's literally showing you these signs in the heavens, when they begin to happen and you're looking up, and you're lifting up your head to look at those things, the next thing is your redemption draws near Passover night. The night of watching for the redemption for the Lord to appear suddenly in the cloud to take us to be where he is because he's prepared a place for us that where he is, there we may be also. And this is totally thrilling and I hope it blesses you to hear it. So I will just show you a couple of the pictures that I took of the partial solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024, and then some of the Weather Channel 
clips of the Dallas-Fort Worth and some of the Illinois um, eclipse still shots that they got. So be blessed. It's totally exciting. I'm, I couldn't believe that right at totality, the Lord provided a set of solar eclipse glasses. Otherwise, I would have missed it. And also, I wanted to say that they said that there's not going to be another one until 2044. That's 21 years from now. I may not even be here at that point. And also, the odds of it going over the same cities, it takes 300 to 375 years for an eclipse to come back around to go over the same place twice. So that's a long time to wait. So you can see how all the signs that we've already had with this one, with, you know, the Aleph and the Tav and everything, the cross, the city of rapture, all the Ninevehs, the Jonah, and I'm sure there's a lot more. And the sign of the covenant, when they're about to do the covenant with many, with the red heifer, and all of these things are the signs in the heavens that make us look up. And our redemption is drawing near. Because Passover is April 22nd in the evening. So we can look forward to that. So now let me just share my pictures and some of those other pictures of the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse with totality and I hope you enjoy this I'm totally excited about this and we're just going to keep watching because we know the Lord is coming soon I hope you enjoy this I'll see you in the next video please subscribe to my channel and thank you for support for my channel I really greatly appreciate it I'll leave those links in the description box, plus the link to my book, which is at olivepresspublisher.com, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel. I hope you had such a gloriously exciting day. I couldn't believe that the Lord provided those glasses for me right at totality. Otherwise, I would have missed it. So, thank the Lord I got to see it through the glasses. And I got a little bit in my camera, although it's not really totally clear, but it was better than nothing, believe me. So take a look at these pictures. They're pretty awesome. See you in the next video. Happy April 8th eclipse. The time we've all been waiting for. And truly our redemption is drawing nigh. totality of the April 8th solar eclipse. We're in totality right now. Some birds are singing. I'm not looking at my camera. Just trying to take a little bit of footage of it. It's really dim. The light has dimmed.